Hi, I'm Teresa Lyons, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. In today's Ask Dr. Lyons, the question is, what is a chromosomal microarray? So, I will answer that in PowerPoint. What is a chromosomal microarray? Alright, let's talk about genetic testing first. Genetic testing is a standard practice when someone has a diagnosis of unexplained developmental delay, intellectual disability, or autism. Those are the ones that we're going to focus on. Most patients do not have sufficient physical features for a geneticist to confirm or suggest a specific genetic cause. When you go for an appointment with a geneticist, they will look you up top to bottom. <laughs> And they're really looking for physical features that might suggest or confirm a specific genetic cause. When you need much more information at a granular level, that's when you start doing genetic testing. Chromosomal microarray, abbreviated CMA. CMA is not designed to look for only a specific disease or disorder. It's a very broad technology, but one drawback of this nonspecific technology is finding uncertain, uninformative, or unexpected genetic information. Before doing a CMA, the geneticist usually has you sign a waiver saying that you understand that the information that might be found might be something that you're not looking for not specifically looking for anything related to autism or developmental delay. It's very broad technology. And it might come back with some information that is uninformative. So it certainly is a drawback. CMA is looking at information at the genome level, meaning it looks for missing and extra regions of chromosomal material across every chromosome. And we call those deletions for when it's missing, or duplications for when there's extra regions. CMA is not just looking at one specific region on the chromosome. And it's not looking at just one chromosome. We have 23 pairs, so CMA is looking at all 23 pairs of chromosomes. So the type of information that CMA is looking for is copy number variants. That's the scientific term. A little bit about chromosome. A chromosome is a thread-like structure that contains DNA material, basically genetic information, also known as genes. Chromosomes are not visible in the cell's nucleus, not even under a microscope, when the cell is not dividing. However, the DNA that makes up chromosomes become more tightly packed during cell division, and that's when chromosomes become visible under the microscope. And that's how they were originally studied, way back in the day. But now we have this fantastic technology, CMA. Okay, so I put in a little visual here so that some people are visual learners, some people are more auditory learners. So it's a combination of both. On the left-hand side, let me get my mouse moving. All right, on the left-hand side here is a chromosome. And you can see it has lots of little squiggly lines. That is the really tightly packed DNA information. Okay, so really, really tightly packed. And you can see at this end, the DNA information is starting to unwind in the picture, that is. So you can see it's starting to unwind. And it's even more tightly wound. This, it gets a little complex, but <laughs> just for all intents and purposes today, just understand that. It has to unwind a lot. So when we get towards the end on the lower right hand corner of this figure, if you just look at the tail end here, you could consider this to be pictorially one DNA base pair. So if you had one base here and you had another base here at the other end and they paired together, that would be considered one DNA base pair. In a chromosome, there's 100 million base pairs in a chromosome. So all this information gets really tightly packed and wound. So you start out with one base pair here at the lower right hand corner. 
And in a chromosome, you have 100 million base pairs. Now, CMA technology, the region that it's looking at is anywhere from 30,000 base pairs to 3 million base pairs. Okay, so now here's another scheme of the CMA technology itself. So what CMA does is it has a reference DNA from a control. So, and I asked, when, when we were doing this, <laughs> I asked many questions about the reference DNA, where did it come from, who studied it, um, consistency, all the likes. Um, but it's a pretty standard reference DNA from a control. So on the figure here, here's my mouse again, you can think of the reference DNA as being red, and then the DNA from you or your child would be in the scheme green. So what it does is CMA takes the DNA from both those sources, and then you need to do some denaturing, which is basically separate the strands, chop it up in little pieces, and then you put it on a glass slide. You can see figuratively here, this is the glass slide. And then you scan it through the computer and you get a nice kind of pictorial representation of the information. So if there were any areas of red, that would signify an area of loss, so a deletion. So if you have two strands of DNA, one from the reference and one from the patient, and you combine them all together and you see red popping out, that means only the reference DNA is there. Therefore, there's a deletion from the patient. On the other hand, if you see an area of green, you can see pictorially it's represented right there, that would mean there's an area of gain, duplication. That's how the geneticist interprets the CMA test results. It's looking at you or your child's DNA in comparison to a reference DNA. In 2010, CMA was chosen to be the best technology for those with a developmental delay, intellectual disability, or autism diagnosis. CMA leads to a diagnosis in about 10 to 15% of those tested, whereas with the traditional technology, which was a chromosomal analysis, there was only a 3% diagnosis yield. And that's why in 2010, CMA was chosen to be the better technology. Now, more targeted molecular genetic testing might still be performed for specific conditions like Fragile X syndrome. In general, genetic testing does cost more than routine labs. CMA is currently more expensive than traditional chromosome analysis, but since the diagnostic yield is significantly higher in patients with developmental delay or intellectual disability, or autism, it's considered to be the first tier testing. This is not experimental technology. This is the standard first tier testing for patients that have developmental delay, intellectual disability, or autism. CMA is a great way to eliminate other possible genetic diseases, which is why this non-disease specific test is usually done first. And that is chromosomal microarray.